going to be. Um, so it took me by surprise, right? So it was like a different country, different language, different educational system, a different society. And it's just, it was just like a huge shock for me. Um, so, but I was like, okay, they know what's best for me. On my freshman year in high school, it was really hard for me to adapt. I was trying to make friends and I couldn't because it was just like the different language. And I was so, um, I was just so conscious about like my accent and like how it was gonna like fit in, right? So um, every day when I come back like from school, I would like cry. You know, and be like, I hate it here. I don't want to live here. Like, I, I cannot make friends. And it was just like, um, so hard. Um, you can go ahead. It was very overwhelming, very overwhelming in my, in my first year. Um, good thing is like my sister, she's a social worker and she's such a really, really good listener. And every day I would just like talk to her and tell her like, hey, like, you know, like, I don't know what to do and stuff like that. And my sister, she was like, you should try something that will help you like channel your feelings, you know, something that will help you just like balance your emotions and it's something you can work with. Um, and uh, you can go ahead. And that's when I was like, okay, let me start making art. And I started painting and I started experimenting with things and stuff. And uh, I realized that I was kind of like good at it, you know, I was like, oh, like, this is good. Like, I think I can do this, right? And I started first like doing painting and sculpture and I really liked it. And um, one day my parents, they came back um, from Mexico to pick me up for the weekend. And they realized that I was like still struggling um, to fit in in the school. And they told me, you know, Yoshi, we talked about this and stuff, and we want to propose you something. And I was like, okay, like, what's up? And they were like, you can go back home. Like, you can return to Mexico, like, back where you live, how it used to be, like, the same school, and, like, with your friends and everything, um, if you want to. And I was super excited because I was like, oh, my gosh, I can go back to, like, how my life used to be, right? And, um, and I texted, I have this like group chat with my friends and I texted them telling them like, hey guys, like I'm going back to Mexico. And they were like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, we're so excited. Like we miss you so much. And then I had one friend that texted back. I knew you weren't gonna make it. And when I read that text, I was like, whoa, okay, no. And then I told my, I told my parents, I was like, I'm gonna stay, I'm not gonna go home. And everyone's just like really shook, right? It's like, why? Like, this is why you want in like your entire life. And I was like, it kind of made me realize there's some time, like periods in your life that things are not gonna work out for you. Like things are not gonna go in your way. And sometimes you just have to like adapt to them and like, just like move on. And, um, and I did it, I graduated high school. Um, I graduated high school and, um, and then I, I attended college and you can go ahead. And I attended Arizona State University. And, um, and I was like, yeah, like forks up, you know, like, I guess I was like, yeah, let's do this. I applied to a bunch of universities. And of course I was like, I wanna go to California, like animation and stuff like that. Um, but ASU offered me like the most scholarships and uh, just like, I was closer to home and I was like, okay, like, let's do this. And the program they had, they didn't have an animation program. Um, so I kind of, what I had to do is that I built my own major when I was at ASU. I was like, what's the closest to animation? And I was like, okay, intermediate art. It's the perfect combination of arts and engineering. And I was like, let's do that. Like my dad, he did engineering, he didn't get to finish it. So it's like, I'm gonna have that kind of aspect of it. And then I have like the creative part of my mom being an artist and I was like, yes, like this works really well. Um, Fun story, when I was at ASU on my orientation day, um, you know, they were like saying like, oh yeah, it's like ASU is like number one in innovation and like all this stuff. And um, I raised my hand and I asked like, what do you mean by innovation? Like, what did we do? And they couldn't answer my question. And I, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I guess. And, uh, but yeah, my freshman year of college, I focused on like, doing clubs, um, going out with my roommate and just like, 
you know, build like a social life and just like being curious and trying to just be involved on campus, looking what there were like open positions and like jobs on campus, um, looking up like what other like similar interests, like I joined this like girls, um, girls like skating club. And I started skating on campus and it was like super cool. And then there's, there's also this like pizza club. And I was like, we like hang out on Fridays and we just like eat pizza. And I was like, oh yeah, I like, I love this. And, but then I started realizing there was like something missing. I was like, mm, there's still like not a film or an animation club. Um, so it just like stayed in the back of my head. Um, you can go ahead. On my sophomore year of, of college, I got a position to be a creative mentor. And a creative mentor is a group of 11 people that focus on first year and transfer students. And we help them to foster creative programming or anything creative um, help that they need. Like if it was a project or if they're needing like funding for like, a, I don't know, an exhibition, like we were there um, for them, right? This job helped me a lot, a lot, a lot to build my communication skills and my connection skills. Um, this job really helped me like talking about like the head, the people from like head departments, CEO of companies, and just like how to value their time and how to like, you know, keep that connection like throughout your life. Um, and you can go ahead. And something else that I did on my sophomore year is that I took my first ever um, stop motion class. And this was thought by um, Hillary Hart. Um, she's here uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the presentation right now. And one of the first things that I did, it was this paper cutout animation. Um, it's called Señor de las Nieves. And um, that's it, you can play it. After doing that paper cut out animation I was like I this is so fun you know like animating is so fun and I really want to keep trying this so I was like let's level up let's level up one of the less things uh in the class in the syllabus is to make your own puppet so that was the first time that I also made like a uh, stop motion puppet and I made this um puppet it's called Papa Panchito um and this is a test animation that I did for it Yes. And after doing that test animation, it really helped me to like see like what were the limitations of the puppet, you know, like how 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 to walk do like a walk cycle, like raising his hands and just like figure out like timing and stuff like that. And after that I was like, hmm, I kind of want to make like a partner to Papa Panchito. Um and on the next slide, um there's uh Mama Maria. So and then I created this like 15, 15 second animation. And after doing this, I was, I, I started falling like in love with stop motion. And I was like, I really want to do this for a living. Like it, um, you can change the next slide. I really want to do this for a living. Here's a class pic photo from like all the puppets from that time. Um, amazing people. I mean, such great friends. And it was so cool because you can see how different each puppet is and how everyone had like a different style of how they like animated things. Um, you, you can go ahead. And after taking that class, um, I really wanted to get more involved into that like stop motion community. 
So another like great resource for like artists in general, it's Instagram. Um, I know it's like a very, this like social media that we use like all the time, but honestly, Instagram, it kind of like also really works as your portfolio. Uh, you have a lot of like these artists that they post their work and it's the same description as like the process, like the behind the scenes and everything. And while I was like scrolling through Instagram, I started following like all these like animators and different puppet artists. And I was just trying to get like more involved in the community and at the same time just asking them questions like oh my gosh like what material did you use like I love this and saving posts and like just trying to see like how the community works and what they're looking for but after um while I was like scrolling I found this company in Mexico City called Cinema Fantasma. Cinema Fantasma is a stop motion animation studio that works for Cartoon Network um Latino uh, for Adult Swim Coca-Cola, Mattel, Hasbro, like all these like big brands. And what they do is like they create all the commercials um, for it. So I found that on Instagram and uh, I have family in Mexico City. So I was like, it would be cool if I can take an internship in there. So I literally just like DM them and I was like, hey guys, like I came across your profile. I'm an animation student and I'm really interested in stop motion. And I just wanted to know if you guys are offering like any internships and stuff like that. And they were like, hey, Josephine, like we're really working on this like projects right now. And it would be great to have like a, another pair of hands to help us out, right? And um, they were like, send us over your portfolio. And I sent over like the stuff that like, that I had from like the stop motion class. And they were like, yes, like, come over, right? And they told me it's going to be unpaid, but the experience is great. And that's something that I wanted to mention. There's a lot of internships, animation internships, and like stop motion internships that when you're like an undergrad, they're unpaid, um, which, which kind of sucks. But at the same time, it's like you do meet a lot of people when you're doing that and you make like great connections. And at the same time, you get a feel like if this is really what you want. Um, so you can do the next slide. So I flew to Mexico City and I lived there for three months. Um, when I, I was there, they were they gave me classes all the way from pre-production, production, and post-production process. Um, so here on the left, it's a picture of or character design class, and it was taught by the Asombrosos. It, the Asombrosos, like this really like twin um, brothers that this twins that they work for really big like movies. Um, they just work for, I believe like Maya and the Three, like the Netflix show. They did some background painting for Arcane, also the Netflix show. They're just like really, really, really good illustrators and character designers. And it was just so cool that, be, that I was able to take a class with them about character design. Also while I was there for the first time ever, I was, I saw a stop motion set um, in real life. So it was like, they're huge, right? There's like a picture on the right that is, that's just like a door of like, <laughs> of like a scene, you know? And it's so huge. Uh, you can do the next slide. Um, and also while I was there, um, Cinema Fantasma, they were working on their first um, show for Cartoon Network and HBO Max, which is called Los Sustos Ocultos de Frankelda. Um, and in English is um, uh, Frankelda, the Book of Spooks. And it was just so inspiring to look at, like being able to see this like professional quality stop motion puppet that they use for filming. Um, you can see these, this is available to watch on HBO Max. Uh, so you can also like check it out in there. Uh, you can do the next slide. So while I was like in there, you know, like I was able to see like the whole, like the camera rigging, the lighting, um, all these like motor control cameras, um, the sets were beautiful. And on the other slide, there's also um, more, um, uh, the way they do like the face replacement method. And something that um, Cinema Fantasma does is that they don't do they're one of the few stop motion studios that they don't do 3D printing or green screening. Uh, they do everything by hand. So if there's a scene that there's like fire, they use real fire. And if there's a scene that there's like water, they'll, they'll try in a way to make it like all literally like stop motion. 
And that was really cool to see because they would experiment with all these like different materials and like techniques and how they would like make like an actual piece. Uh, you can go ahead. Um, also, what I was doing that internship, they were able to show me how to make like a professional quality puppet. Um, this is the puppet that I made at the internship. His name is Killian. It has some ball and socket armature. Um, they show me how to do like also like a foam latex and how to apply fur into it. And that puppet has a face replacement with magnets. So you can remove the face and change the character expressions. And then all the way from the horns, the hair, the finger, the toes, the clothes, it's everything is animatable. Um, and on the next slide, I made another like test animation um, of, the, of the puppet. You can go ahead. <laughs> These were like quick animations that I did while I was like there and I was like, oh, you, you have 15 minutes and we're like, ah, let's just like move in and take pictures with my phone and stuff. And this is like what I came up with. Uh, you can go ahead. And after that, um, that internship, I, I met like such amazing people. Here's like um, a, a picture of like the studio crew and um, the other interns that they had at the time. You can do the next slide. And um, when I came back um, to Arizona, um, Hillary, um, she mentioned to us how there was this club that uh, ASU used to have that it was called Society for Art Video and that we should bring it back. So Madison, my friend from the Stop Machine Animation class and I, we like got together and we were like, we should do this. Like we should start this club. Like this is a great idea. And mentioning like back when I started um, ASU in my freshman year, I was looking at clubs. There wasn't really like an animation or like a, anything like video related club. So I know there was like a lot of people who were gonna be interested on it. So we sat on like a, a bunch of like art fairs and like club fairs and just like promoting our club. We had like my laptop up in there like showing and like other like stop motion animation films from like other like students from like all over the world. And we got like a lot of people interested. Um, and we thought it was like, this is a great way to keep stop motion alive because um, it, it was like 2D and CGI and 3D animation was like rising like crazy, but then like stop motion was left behind and we wanted more people to appreciate the art form. So while we were in, on an SAV and Society for Art video, uh, we had this idea of like bringing a professional from the industry um, to give a lecture and a masterclass about like stop motion, right? Um, and Madison and I and like the rest of the of the club members, we raised enough money so we could bring um, Patrick Sung. Um, you can go ahead. And Patrick Sung, he's right now my current boss um, where I work at. Um, Patrick Sung is this like amazing genius person. Um, he has done so many things for like so many movies. What he focuses mostly on is um, doing all the mechanics for like animation. So he does mostly, mostly like the engineering part of it. So all from like the head mechanics, what's inside of the body and everything like puppet fabrication. Um, you can go ahead. Patrick's son also has worked on so many um, stuff. He was one of the creators of Celebrity Deathmatch. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that from MTV. Super, super amazing show. That was a claymation uh show he was all he also worked on kuba and the two strings which is my favorite stop motion animated movie um he created the the two the two evil sisters from that movie um right now we're, we're currently working still on tumble leaf which is like a kids shows from amazon prime but my favorite thing that patrick has done um you can go ahead it's the judge from paranorman um, he did all the head mechanics from the judge to like open the jaw, the way he moves. And he said that in order just to create this character, it took him a whole year, just like 
do the whole engineering of it. And it just like blew my mind because like there's so much that goes into it and not like a lot of people really see that, you know, until like they like see it on the screen. Uh, you can go ahead. And while um, Patrick, we contacted him and told him, hey, like you should come over uh, to campus and like do a lecture and masterclass. He was like, yes, oh, there's Hillary right there. And um, he came over to campus and then he brought it with him like some of the uh, past work that he has done. And he also um, brought like blueprints of like characters that he like designed and did like the whole armature machining part of it. And he was like showing to us. This little guy, that's an animatronic for a show that is called Moon and Me. Uh, you can play the video. To, to make the, that go more, it, you're supposed to kind of get a little sad and, and concerned. So <laughs> there's these little concern things. If this was glued down, it would kind of read better. Um, but you basically, as a puppeteer, you're like, okay, to the left, I'm kind of sad and concerned the right I'm happy right and then like these are my blinky blinks and this is my left and right um he can't look all the way around he's just kind of left <laughs> he can go to the next slide so while I was um doing that I just got like so much inspiration by like everything that I learned with Patrick and everything that I learned in the internship and I was like, I'm gonna keep trying to get better at these skills and just like, ex something a lot that I do is like, I do a lot of experimentation. I mix a lot of mediums or just like different things that I learn. And I'm like, how can I apply this to stop motion? You know, how can I make it like different? Um, so right here, I made this um, animation for the third time. I took stop motion animation class three times. Uh, so this is the third time that I took stop motion animation and I took it as an um, independent studies class and I made this little guy. <laughs> You can go to the next slide. Um, so after doing that whole like animation thing, I was like, oh yes, I was like super pumped. It was like, I'm gonna collaborate with more people. I'm gonna do more stuff. And then COVID hit. Uh, and it was like starting my second semester of my junior year. And it was just so upsetting because I'm a very people person and I love working at studios and like collaborating with different artists. And at the time I was living on campus in my dorm, but when COVID hit, they kicked me out of my dorm. So I had to move to my brother's house. And uh, I basically had to like change my whole mentality of like how I can create stuff with the materials that I have or the space that I have. So I basically turned his garage into like a little animation slash art studio. Um, and I wanted to keep practicing. You can go to this next slide. And when I wanted to keep practicing, um, I couldn't do puppet fabrication anymore. So it was like, maybe I can start working more on my animating skills. Um, so I was like, a great way to do it with clay. Like that's a great way to start it out. So. I use a multi down shooter that we made on the stop motion class. And uh, I made this like little um, animation with just clay. And on the right picture, you can see how I was like prepping like every frame that I had like laid down under the black circle. Um, this animation, it took me I think it was like three weeks. Um, every day I was doing like at least like four to six hours um, of applying. And, um, you know, and the animation is what, like six seconds long, <laughs> you know? Like, they, it really shows like how much it takes to do this kind of stuff. Um, you can do the next slide. And after that, I was, I graduated college and it was so great. And I was like, so happy. And um, 
also something else with that when I graduated going back to like when I was like in my orientation um, date of when I asked what's innovation and they couldn't answer my question when I graduated college I graduated my class I won an award as the most creative and innovative of the class and I still don't know what anim innovation stands for you know it, it was just like something very like weird um, and here that I am with Selena, she's my best friend that I met on orientation and we were able to graduate together too. Uh, you can do the next slide. So after that, um, and when I was there, oh, there's a close up of me um, when I finally graduated. You can go again. So after that, um, this is a picture that I, I, I think the photographer did such a great job like capturing those moments, honestly. Um, Melissa Button, is she in that picture, she's asking me like, so what's next, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, like what's next? Like I just graduated, what am I gonna do? Uh, at the time I was working at Blake Art Materials. I was, a, I, I was a creative mentor when I graduated, like I lost that job because it was like only when you're in college, like if you can like have that job. So I just had like Blick on materials and it was a part-time um, um, employee in there. And then I turned to a full-time. And when I was there, I was like, I'm gonna start to apply to all these like creative places that I could just think of. And while I was doing that, I was like, I should also start working on like all the video editing skills that I have or like special effects. And um, I started reaching out to people and I started making like a lot of connections and you can go to the next slide. Um, so, and something that helped me a lot uh, was collaborating with um, students that went to Arizona State. Uh, this is um, Stephanie, um, which is a postly um, video, a video installation that she had in Smoka. And while I was working with her, I developed like so many skills of like how to work with another like professional and at the same time, how to like time manage and uh, even like working remotely, right? Because like everything changed, like, you know, the COVID changed everything. So it was like, how to work remotely with them when, in terms of creating a video. Uh, and this is a drone shot um, of one of the, of the piece. Um, you can go to the next slide. And while I was also working on Stephanie, I was also working on another video for Lily Reeves. And it's also the same um, installation on, on Smoka. Um, this, this installation, it really opened a lot of doors for me. A lot of people were able, like thanks to them and for trusting me, a lot of people like were able to recognize my name and just like reach out and like, say like, hey, like we need like some video editing for this and this and this. And it really helped me a lot. And you can do the next slide. And while I was doing all of this and I was like applying to all these jobs, right? Um, I applied to like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, um, um, other like creative companies that were like in Phoenix for like marketing and stuff like that. And I also apply um, to Apple. And while I was working at Blake, I got a call from Apple saying that they offered me an interview. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, and I took the interview. And honestly, it was the hardest interview that I ever had in my entire life. This interview lasted two, this interview process lasted two months long. Um, there were seven interviews in total and they were 780 applicants. And while I was doing this, you know, um, every, all the interviews were like through Zoom and they were like so competitive. It was me and I, rem I had neon green hair at the moment and it was me against all these other professionals. Um, there was this guy that he was like a journalist from the Rolling Stones. There was this other person that they were like this like business um, for this like creative company. There was this other person that they were, they were like a, a creative engineer for something else. And then it was me like an undergrad you know, that just grad, like someone who just like graduating like ASU. But something um, that stand out from me, from them is that I was really hungry. I was hungry for just creating stuff. And I wanted to just like expand my creator boundaries. And after interview and inter interview, I passed all of them and they gave me the job. 
I got offered to, I got the job to be a creative for Apple. Um, and they were training me to move to headquarters in uh, California. And it was just like insane. I was like, the Mexican girl with neon green hair who just graduated college got the job. I was like, that's insane. And I couldn't believe it. You know, I was super happy, super, um, super happy for the opportunity. And right when I got the job, I gave like my two week notice of Blake and I was like, I quit. And, and, <laughs> and then after that, when my two weeks passed by, I went back home to Mexico because I had like a week to like rest and you can go to the next slide. And while I was in Mexico, um, I was like 20 hours in there and I was watching Netflix with my mom and we were watching my one of my favorite movies, Fantastic Mr. Fox. And I told my mom, you know, like I'm very grateful about the Apple opportunity, but honestly, this is what I wanna do. I was like, I really wanna make movies. I really wanna make stop motion. Like I wanna create puppets, I wanna anime and stuff like that. And no joke, like, Three minutes later, I my phone started vibrating. I answered my phone and it was Patrick's son. And he was like, hey, just me, how you doing? I was like, hey, Patrick, like I'm really good and stuff like that. He's like, I saw on Instagram that you graduated. And I was like, oh yeah. And he was like, congratulations, stuff like that. And he was like, so what are you doing right now? Like, are you looking for a job? And I was like, because I had the uh, Apple offer already. And I was like, yes. Uh, yes, I am. I am. I'm. I'm looking for a job. He was like, "Well, right now we're really busy at the studio. We're working on three big productions." And I thought of you. Like I remember when you were in college, you had this like passion. You helped me so much while I was doing the lecture and the master class. And I thought of you. And he was like, "Do you want to do this?" And I was like, "Yes." And three weeks later, uh, you can the next slide. Three weeks later, I packed my car and I was on my way um, to North Carolina. Uh, this, that's where I'm currently right now. I was on my way to North Carolina. Everything that fit, the drive was beautiful. It took me three days to drive here. Um, I could see like how like the scenery was changing and it was just like insane. I was like, I can't believe that I'm doing this. Oh, it's something that when I was driving here, I got, <laughs> I got a call from Apple asking me like hey Josephine so like we just want to make sure that you're ready for like the 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 um, the training you know like starting Monday and stuff like that I was like oh yeah I I don't want it anymore like I quit and they're like what what do you mean you quit and I was like yeah like this I got offered my dream job you know like I just gotta I have to take it and and they were like okay you know and of course, they gave it like to someone else, but whatever. Uh, so when I moved, I moved here and it was just like insane. And uh, the first thing that Patrick asked me, I was like, okay, Josephine, like, do you want to start slow? Like, do you want to like get used to things or do you just want to like go for it? And I was like, you know what? Let's just go for it. And uh, you can go the next slide. And the first, the first thing that he put me to do is to put me to work to Wendell and Wilde. Uh, which is the movie that is coming out on October 2022, is directed by Henry Selick. He was a director of The Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, James, of the Gi um, James and the Giant Peach. Uh, it was also co-written by uh, Keelan Peel, the comedians Keelan Peel, and Henry Selick itself. And this is one of the hardest things that I've ever done in my entire life because not only he just put me work for it on like a big production, I, the thing about this job is that there's no, there's not a book that tells you how to do it. You know, you have to figure it out. So there were like, well, okay. I cannot share a lot of this because they made me sign like NDAs and stuff like that. But let's say a little. For this movie, <laughs> I had to work, um, what I got assigned to do is on the villain. And I had to make this like, huge hands that they were going to use with rigging uh, for the main characters and the villain. And Patrick was like, here's the renderings, here's the illustration, here's the character, do it. And I was like, okay. So while I was working on this, it's so much testing and planning. I had to learn how to do metal work, 
woodwork, um, fiberglass. Like I had to taught myself like how to do all those things, working with silicone, working with resin. And I was able to complete the project on time and ship it to Netflix. They Netflix test this, they look at it and then they give you reviews and then they send it back. They're like, you know what? We liked it, but we would like for have more flexibility and you have to do it all over again. And like, do like all this adjustments until you ship it to them and they're like, okay, this is great. We're going to use this. Um, this is, this is kind of how it works uh, at the place that I'm working at. And when I finished the, what I was working at Wonder and Wild, the next production I got moved to, um, you can the next slide, was um, Pinocchio, um, which is directed by Guillermo del Toro. And this movie is also coming out and this year on December. This is the movie that I'm very, very, very excited for. Um, for this movie, I got to work um, on 10 different characters. Um, and, you know, this is a period I've, I've been working there. I moved here about seven months ago. So in seven months, I've been able to work in two big productions, um, doing like things that they have asked me to do. And uh, once I finished Pinocchio, uh, you can go to the next slide. I started fully focusing on this um, on this production that is called We Do Go War. Uh, we Do Go War is a stop motion short film that is written by Amanda Strong. Um, Spotify Studios is a studio that is located in Canada. And this uh, short film is based on a short story by Richard Van Camp. Um, the, one of the characters that I got assigned to work on this movie, it's one of the main characters is this puppet, um, this frog character. And what I was responsible for, for doing this character is like, I had to do a lot of sculpting, like final details and sculpting for this frog. I had to create molds. I had to do a fun latex. I had to do um, all the silicone, like the skin, the paint job. Well, other person is working on the, the, the armature and the head mechanics. So a lot of when it's working in stop motion, it's like you're working with a lot of different departments and it's a lot of communication. So when you're working on something, you're checking on other people, like saying like, hey, when is this is going to, when are you going to finish for this or stuff like that? And they're like, I need like another two weeks. And it's like, okay. And while they're working on something, you're trying to move forward on something else. Um, and the way we start working on these films too, is that before we start working on uh, a character, they send to us an animatic. An animatic is like a short, like 2D animated, quick 2D animated storyboarded um, of like the character or like a certain scene. Um, so with this animatic, we're able to see like what they want the character to do. So if this frog, like we saw that the frog, he needed to be able to do like swimming movements, also like bending, jumping, um, crouching. So from there, we're already starting to plan how it's going to be the whole engineering inside the frog so that it can do those kinds of movements. Um, you can go to the next slide. And here's a test animation of the complete. Oh, uh, those rotten brothers. They did a number on me. I didn't think I was going to make it. Thank you, grandchild. For and, waiting um, for me to come back to life. <laughs> and uh, the the other slide is another test animation. And uh, so this is really cool because when we finish a character, we ship it to Canada and then we have a Slack channel. And on Slack, there's a channel that's like for animation and the animators over there, they like test this puppet, right? And uh, then we get feedback saying like, you know what, like this, this is the first puppet uh, that I've ever like shipped. And their first review was like, this is perfect. Like you don't need to change, change anything. And it was just like so cool saying like, oh, I was able to make something on the first try that it was like, just like that production quality. Um, so right now while I'm working on this film, 
is that they asked me, okay, now can you do it three times? So I had to recreate the same character, like a whole replica uh, three times. Um, today, coming back from work, I just finished the second one. And next week I'm gonna be starting on the third one, the third replica. Um, and you can go to the next slide. And that is pretty much it. That's like all the stuff that I've been working on since I moved here to North Carolina, my journey in college, the stuff that I learned, um, how to keep connections and stuff like that. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful of where I'm at right now. And I'm very excited to see where things are gonna go next. Okay, well, thank you so much, Josephine. That was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, actually, this is really funny. You were my creative mentor, and seeing that photo of you, I was like, I remember her hair. I remember her, like, talking to me about my <laughs> project. Um, that was kind of amazing. I, I love that. Um, I guess now we can open up before any questions. Um, I definitely think there's enough of us here to... I guess just ask verbal questions if anyone's interested. You can put it in the chat too. One of us from the WIA board can read it out loud. Yeah, so we can open up the floor. Yeah, whatever you guys are comfortable, you can like just turn off your mic or if you want to type it, like whatever works. So this is kind of not a question, it's more of like a comment. Um, I'm Jackie, so I graduated with Josephine. <laughs> Um, and seeing all of this is super exciting because I got to see Josephine's journey like by her side throughout college and you could see sometimes we would have like these breakdowns, you know, it doesn't always go perfect. <laughs> so getting to see like the roller coaster and seeing it all come together, I just feel so proud for you, Josephine. And I'm so happy that I got to see your journey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Jacqueline, she's also an amazing, amazing, amazing 3D modeler. Um, and right now they're living in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So look at us, Jackie. We're moving places. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I know, I know. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I have a question. First, I miss you, and I'm so glad to see you uh, thriving. And also, it's really nice, like what Jackie was saying. It's really great to see your journey. Um, and so, I have I have two questions. The first one is how like how does it feel to have to repeat that process of like making a model puppet, like and having it to be like a replica? Like, do you feel a lot of pressure on you? So question number one. And then question number two is, do you want to continue to like do fabrication or would you like to eventually like work up towards animate to like animating and what does that process look like? Yeah, um, those are great questions. So the first one uh, in terms of replicating a character, um, it's really hard. It's it's really stressful, especially because they have these deadlines for you. And it's because what happens um, specifically with Spotify and the studio in Canada is that they have these animators that come from all over the world to work on the film. So there's like, okay, this animator will be here May 22nd. So this puppet, that puppet needs to be done before that time, you know, because they have like a contract. So from there, you're already starting like time managing on how long it's going to take you to do things. And since a single puppet, it goes through different departments. Like first it starts from, you know, like the metal fabrication, doing all the stuff. Another person is working on all the head mechanics. Another person is doing like all the armature and stuff like that. Um, I'm doing the whole like mold making, um, the foam latex, the silicone, and the whole like the paint job. So I'm basically the beginning and the end of the process. Um, and when it comes to doing replicating, actually my desk, I wish I could show you guys, it's crazy. Like I have all these like pictures that I took like on my phone and I printed it out from like the past, the past puppet that I did. And every single little thing, like, I don't know, like the line that I make over here or like um, a scar that it's on this side, um, 
that I have to take all that because the other puppet needs to have the exact same thing. And that's when the process starts getting very difficult and very tedious. Um, so like the whole like painting stuff, um, this was, this happened the past character that I made because of time we were like losing time um, that usually a whole paint job takes me like about a week or two to do. And now they, I had to could do that work in three days. Um, and it was just like insane. Um, and it's another way for me to like push myself and how I can make this quicker because that's something that they look at the industry. They look for think, three things, um, for you to be the best at what you do, uh, for you to be the fastest at what you do, and for you to be cool, like to be funny or nice or something. And the reason it is because you work with so many people at the same time that you have, you need to be able to have like a good environment and how to teamwork and stuff like that. Um, and if you have two of those, you're set, like you can make it. Uh, and the connection, of, of course, the connection is very important. Um, so yeah, it is very hard to do a um, replica. And the second question about where I wanna go, um, right now I'm getting a lot of, um, a lot of, um, experience in puppet fabricating. And that's something that if you want to get into the stop motion industry, you need to be able to understand how that works because then you have a better idea of how the other departments work around it. Um, in terms of like pre-production, the production and the post-production process, because the fabricators are the ones who kind of make the film happen, you know? Um, so my goal is to be a creative director. I want to be a creative director either for like a, but in film, um, for like Netflix or Leica or Leica is like my dream job. Um, something I, I forgot to mention on the presentation is that while I was in college, every year I would apply to Leica. Every year I would like make a new portfolio, a new resume, a new website, and I would try and try and try. And every year I got rejected. Like every year it was like, no, you don't qualify or like stuff like that. And it was so, so, every time I would get rejected, it was like so devastating, you know, because I, I started doubting myself, you know, like, can I, should I really keep doing this? Like I didn't even make it, like can make it there and stuff like that. And what's crazy is that now I'm just a call away from Leica. Um, and it's because of the connections that I have um, done and the stuff that I'm learning right now. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Oh, sorry, continue. No, okay. Hi, this is Arlette. <laughs> uh, I have a question for like people who are like sort of in between sort of like picking what to focus on in terms of like the pipeline. Mm -hmm. I was wondering like based on like your experience, like how should people approach like focusing like whatever they want to do, concept art, storyboarding, animation or whatnot? <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is some, this is a struggle that I had a lot in college too, because first I started um, before doing stop motion, I was like, ooh, I want to do 2D. And then I was like doing 2D, I was like, ooh, what if I try 3D? And then I started 3D and I was like, eh, I don't know. And then I started stop motion. And that's when I found like my passion. But I do have like a lot of friends that they're really good at like so many things. And there's like, how can I just focus on one thing? Um, something that I learned throughout too is that whatever calls you more, I, I say that it's the one that you should put your most time into it. And you should just start like practicing um, towards that kind of skill. You know, it's like storyboarding, like start storyboarding, like go to Starbucks. And then I don't know, look at a couple that they're like fighting, I don't know, on Starbucks. And then just start making your own like little story and then like on a sketchbook, just start practicing that. Um, and that's something too, like how I mentioned, like they're looking for you to be the best, the fastest uh, at what you do. So also practicing like how fast you can do things, you can finish it. But at the same time, they're like really good, like production wise. Um, and um, asking a lot of questions, like if you like go and mention again, like Instagram, you know, if there's like a storyboard artist that you re really like, they were, they started like you, you know, like there was a point and that they were also like had the same question just as you. And believe it or not, 
everyone loves to share their story and like or share like how they did it so if you just like dm them or if you like email if you get like their email or something and say hey i'm a student i love your work can you share with me you know like can we have a little talk or something of like how you did this like i'm pretty sure they will be able to share that um with you it's it's really impressive how like how i have talked with so many people just by commenting their picture <laughs> or like just like DM them or like responding a story or something. Um, so I would, yeah, I would try for that. Just getting like different experiences um, and see which one calls you more. Uh, I see a question in the chat. It says, what is like working with a huge team compared to working by yourself? Okay, this is, this is a very good question. When you're working by yourself, you kind of measure your own time, right? Because you know how long it takes for you to do certain things or like you have like a better idea of like, I don't know, maybe you're a, a morning person or a night owl and like those are the works, the, the times that you work and stuff like that. But when working on a huge team, um, everyone is at a different place and everyone works uh, like has, it takes them like different um, time to finish certain things. Um, so a lot of what I learned is like communication is very important. So when I'm working at the studio, I'm always walking around and seeing like where things are at. And like on when we're like on a break or something, you know, like ask them about like understanding their process, just so be, you can be more mindful about like where they at. Um, yeah, it's, uh, but it's really cool. It's really cool because you get to meet like amazing people. And at the same time, there's, there's sometimes that the studio gets really busy and uh, you need to get stuff done. So sometimes even that person trains you to learn to do what they're doing. So if there's a time that they're missing, you can jump over their stuff and you can finish it for them. Uh, so that kind of also like really helps too. Um, we did have one more question in the chat from Summer. It was, is it more stressful to make puppets than to animate them? Oh, okay. Um, I haven't been able to animate on a big production, um, but from like the animators that I've heard from is that they do a lot of test animations beforehand before doing or doing uh, blocking. It's called blocking. So it's like the blocking the animation before they do like the, the smooth one. Um, honestly, I, I cannot I cannot speak for them because I, I, I don't like animate on big productions, but the puppet fabricating part, it is very stressful in terms of like, how do I do this? You know, like, <laughs> like how, how can I make this character? They, they send me a, a 2D drawing and they're like, okay, make it. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I feel like that's, that's really hard uh, to do. But I, I, I'm animating, there's people who just like have it, who just like can do it, you know? And um, they, I, I believe puppet fabricating, it, it's, it's more time consuming and there's like more of like a niche um, skill that you need to have. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I have one more question. We have time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so curious, because I know that you mentioned that Patrick does a lot of like the engineering for the puppets. So do you guys like co, do you guys co-create the puppet? Like the 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 frog that you did for Spotted Fawn, um, did he do like the armature? Are you doing the armature? You're doing everything. So this one uh, for the puppet for Spotted Fawn, we're working together, me and Patrick. So it's like he's starting, he's doing like the whole blueprint of like the sign, the armature and the head make and stuff like that. And then while he's doing that, at the same time, I'm kind of like shadowing him, like understanding like how it works and stuff. I definitely do more of like the mold making and the silicone, like the whole chemical process, I do more. Um, and he does more like the engineering part. But for this frog, I was able to work a little bit on the head mech and just to get like a feel like how it works. So it's definitely a lot about 
we're working together um, to make that character. But his main focus is doing the whole, the engineering part of it, um, the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can I ask one quick question? Sorry, I've got feedback. Um, Josephine, you're we're in a room that doesn't have great um, reception, and um, we we couldn't watch the videos animate. So, can you send us a link to see the videos? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll send it over right now. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was like my connection. Um, I'll send over the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Do you mind if I ask one really quick last question? <laughs> um, so I'm also an intermediate student and it's kind of like you become like a jack of all trades. So <laughs> it's, and it's kind of good and it's kind of bad because you get a little Ooh, I kind of lost you in there. Um, to where you are now. Oop, did I cut out? Yeah, can you yeah. repeat your question? Yep, I can do that. Um, what were some of your like technical like skills that you learned in school or like on your own that helped you like get to where you are now? Cool, so a lot, that's a great question. So, you know, like being an intermediate major, um, what I did is that if I wanted to do stop motion, it's that because the animation major um, didn't exist by the time that I was attending, I was kind of looking at the classes that ASU offered that would count as a credit towards my major, but you know they would help me to do stop motion, you know? So there was like a math credit that I needed to take and I, and I was like, well, instead of taking calculus, I can take this um, coding and programming class you know, that will help me at least to learn how to do like uh, the special effects part of it, you know. Um, there was like another, these like fine art credits that I needed to take. And of course, I really want to learn like printmaking and stuff like that. But I knew that sculpture will help me more um, to do to do like stop motion. So I would take stop motion. I mean, I would take um, sculpture classes or I would take uh, like the intro to digital media. Um, some like production, um, post-production classes, like editing, um, a lot of visual effects. Um, I already mentioned like sculpting, um, the stop motion class that luckily they, they offer it. Um, I even take some like leadership classes because that helped me also to like how to, you know, like um, being the head of a team or how to work with others. Um, and um, yeah, and then on my own time, uh, that's when like I started like, because there wasn't like an animating class. That's when I started practicing animation and like how to make like little like 2D drawings and like Photoshop and stuff like that. Or how to make, um, you know, like working with clay and doing like stop motion and just, um, just so it, I can keep it around and just have like a general idea of how everything works. Does that, does that answer? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.